Every amateur radio operator has some connection to the Federal Communications Commission, as this is the independent agency of the United States federal government that issues licenses as well as creating and enforcing regulation. Viewer James Nunn asked about the symbolism in the FCC seal. Well, of course, once I get a question like that, I become curious. Here's what I've learned. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ask Dave, episode 40. I'm here to answer your questions about ham radio, particularly from those new to the hobby. Let's take a look at two FCC-related graphics. The one on the left is the FCC's logo and is found on millions of devices. Now, what's on the right is not the logo, but rather the seal of the FCC. It is in here that we look for symbolism. As an example of a seal with lots of symbolism, this is the great seal of the United States. The national bird, the bald eagle, has across its chest a shield consisting of seven white stripes and six red. Note this is backwards from the way the flag is put together with seven red stripes and six white. The eagle has clutched firmly in its mouth a slogan, E pluribus unum, or in English, out of many, one, signifying the unity of the nation. In the eagle's left claw are 13 arrows, one for each of the original 13 colonies, indicating that the U.S. will fight as a firmly united nation in the face of war. In the right claw, the eagle holds an olive branch that has 13 leaves and 13 olives as a sign of peace. The eagle faces the claw with the olives, suggesting that the nation prefers peace to war. And above the eagle are 13 stars in the heavens, beaming down on the standard-bearing eagle, giving divine blessing to our fledgling nation. Okay, this gives us some idea of the symbolism that can be found in a seal. To understand the antenna symbolism, let's look at this drawing of the Titanic. It was the sinking of this ship in 1912 that prompted governments around the world to act regarding how ships' wireless stations were to be equipped and operated. Note the antenna for the Titanic's spark station. Long wires stretched between two masts, plus wires going up to the horizontal array. Here's a drawing of the antenna system at station WBZ, taken in 1925, two years before the Federal Radio Commission was created. Note again the flat top, with feeder wires connecting together. Back then, folks didn't understand all that much about radio waves or SWR or feed lines, so their understanding of antennas was entirely experimental. This type of antenna was quite common. The Federal Radio Commission was put in place in 1927 to pull together various efforts to regulate radio. The term Federal Radio Commission is wrapped around the logo. Note the U and the S for the United States. Note also that there are four stars. The number of stars isn't consequential, but the fact that stars appear on the logo is not a coincidence. Now, let's look inside. There's the bald eagle, this time flying, perhaps indicating that radio waves fly from one place to another, high above the reach of opposing armies or navies. And then there is the antenna two tall masts, a three-element flat top, a feed line in the middle, and the lightning arrows indicating that this antenna is transmitting. Now, the FCC was created in 1934 as the successor to the Federal Radio Commission. You can see direct similarities between the two seals. The new FCC seal on the right shows the words wrapped around as before, but this time with a different font. Note here on the left that the hand-drawn font was really designed to be spread out around a circle, whereas the FCC font is a simple sans-serif font with the individual letters in the right place. Now, let's look inside. We see essentially the same antenna as before, but because the FCC has responsibility for additional communications media beyond just radio, the antenna is extended in two additional directions 
but still with the same flat top design. The eagle now has the lightning bolts in its claws, symbolizing perhaps that the eagle has grabbed control of this new medium and will use it to serve the public interest. Anyway, it would be nice to think of it in those terms. Lastly, let's look at the eagle itself. It's rather more stylized than its predecessor, and it appears that its forehead is black, not white. How can this be? Well, as it turns out, there's a reason. The actual seal is in color and is inverted in that light is now dark and vice versa. Now the eagle has a yellow head, which is a step in the right direction toward the naturally white head of the bald eagle. Interestingly, the rope around the edge of the seal reminds one of ships and sailing, a fitting item considering the organization's roots go all the way back to the Titanic. And there it is. Please comment if you have anything you'd like to add to the history of the FCC seal. Now, in a moment, you'll see some clickable areas on the screen. One leads to my tip jar, another to the Ask Dave playlist, and the third is there for you to subscribe to my channel, Ham Radio Answers. Until next time, this is Dave, KE0OG, wishing you the best of luck and 73.